Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today I've got a very interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the brand new Kershaw Launch 15. Look at that. Man, now, you know, preferences to color and materials, is that the, the, the profile of this knife is very, very good looking to me. Uh, they did another, you know, kind of like classical stiletto meets modern stiletto kind of look. They, they did this in the Launch 8 and the Launch 12, is that right? I did the ones that looked like the, you know, the old school uh, Italian stiletto uh, switchblades. Um, they just, you know, brought a, a, a modern tactical look to it. And uh, I, I I like symmetry, especially, you know, in, in, of course, in, well, I say especially in handles and blades. What else? What other part of the knife is there? Um, but I, I like uh, the symmetry of the handle, right? The blade isn't perfectly symmetrical, and that's, you know, for obvious reasons here. Uh, we'll talk all about it. But this is a good-looking knife, and uh, it's made in the United States and is sporting Magna Cut. Are you kidding me? I, I you know... I didn't expect to see Magna Cut on a Kershaw. Uh, I don't know why, but I, I didn't. I think that's really, really cool. Uh, I will make sure that this knife is linked right down below. By the time you're watching this video, it should be available. It does help my channel when you use my links, but that is entirely up to you. Thanks so much to Kershaw for supplying this knife for review. Thanks to my patrons for supporting me. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at Metal underscore Complex. If you have not checked out the Kershaw launch line, those are some of the most competitive uh, competitively priced USA made side opening automatic knives in existence. They really do bring uh, some epic stuff to the table. So make sure and check those out. I'll have those linked down below as well. Let's go ahead and get some measurements. Uh, overall, come on now, I put the grid lines on there for a reason. Uh, overall length is coming in at, wow, 8.4? Yeah, 8.35 inches. Uh, not a small knife. Blade length, three and a half inches on the dot. Cutting edge, also three and a half inches. Nice. I, I like the size of this. How about some size comparisons up against the Ontario Rat Model 1 and the Ontario Rat Model 2? So you can see here, it is absolutely on the larger side. Not a, not a monstrous knife, but on the larger side. How about up against the Demco AD 20.5? There we go. How about up against the Spyderco PM2 and the Spyderco Pair of three, definitely closer to the size of the PM2. And then last but not least, let's put it up against the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue and the Benchmade Bug Out. You can see it's more of a slender, you know, like a, a skinnier profile this way. Um, it's not quite as tall as knives like the Ritter Hogue, but I think that it does it well, right? How's the action, right? That's the, uh, that's the thing with an automatic knife. People like to feel power. It's pretty powerful. It's approaching, I mean, it's. I'd say it's all of 90% of what I experience in ProTech. It's a lot more powerful than what I'd expect. Um, I gotta, I gotta say, uh, Kershaw's overall quality, especially when it comes to their USA, man. You know what? No, it's not even, even like their Chinese stuff. They sent me a bunch of, uh, of the Chinese knives uh, as samples here this year. And that stuff is also, um, they've really stepped it up. Any of you who have purchased Kershaw's, I'm not saying like if you go to Walmart right now and buy a Kershaw out of the case, because a lot of that stuff is from a long time ago. But any of you, any of you who are purchasing newer models, uh, I'd like to hear what you have to say as well. Um, because my, from my perspective, it seems like everything has gotten better. Um, this is more powerful than what I normally experience from the launch series. Not to say that they are not powerful. They're plenty powerful enough. The whole idea is that when you push the button, the blade needs to deploy, right? I always like to test here, pull it back and keep the button held down. Is there enough force to keep throwing the blade out into the open position, even though there's not a whole lot of spring right at this, you know, at this part, you know, of the deployment? And the answer is yes. It's got enough power to do that, right? If you gunk it up, it might slow it down, but keep your knives clean, right? It's got plenty of power. In the past, the launch series has felt more like 70%, maybe as much as 80% from what I experienced with ProTech, but yeah, this is uh, this is getting up there. Plenty of power, and it's very satisfying. The button doesn't take a lot of travel, but it takes enough deliberate force that it's not going to go off on accident. Push the button, and it fires, right? Nice, satisfying automatic deployment. Really cool. Very much like it. 
easy to press. You know, the downside to an automatic knife is that if you want to close it with one hand, you have to do that, which makes everybody yee, right? So I'd, I'd close it with two hands. That's the way to do it with an automatic knife. Anyways, let's go ahead and do carry profile. So thickness up against the Spyderco Para 3. Uh, it's really not all that thick. Uh, it's actually quite a bit thinner than the Para 3, which is going to make a lot of people happy. Length and height up against the PM2 and the Para 3. This guy really just isn't going to be a problem in the pocket for a lot of people. It is almost as, whoops, almost as long. It's almost exactly as long as the Para 3, but nowhere near as tall and thinner. I mean, as far as like a knife on the larger side goes, it's going to disappear, right? In the same way that like, is the Sebenza, isn't the Sebenza an eight and a half inch knife and it disappears like a seven inch knife in the pocket, right? It's just, it's just kind of the, the, the deal there. So yeah, let's go ahead and measure blade stock thickness. Uh, I'm going to guess that's 120 thousandths. I'm just, just guessing beforehand. Yeah, no, it's even... This is 117,000, so not a super thick blade. I might have been catching it on the uh, chamfers there. Let's try and get it all the way down. It says 117,000. Okay, not a thick blade. Materials. We are looking at, of course, MagnaCut for the blade. 6065T6 aluminum. Is that the... Yeah, 6065. It's aircraft aluminum. The same aluminum that we normally see other than 7075 on knives. Uh, and then we have Micarta inlay. Um, it doesn't feel like that heavy of a knife. It feels like it weighs maybe three and a quarter, three and a half ounces, but you know, sometimes I'm wrong. So let's give it a go here. Da, ah, three ounces, three ounces for a three and a half inch blade. Pretty awesome ratios. I'm going to guess that this, the weight is much more. No, you know what? It's literally like perfect. It's right behind this guard area here. The pivot is pro, you know, technically like up here, uh, you'd have to take or I'm sorry, <laughs> no, you don't have to take this off because the adjustment head is right here. So here's where the pivot is. Stupid! Here's where the balance is, right here. Um, so yeah, uh, the knife is very, very well balanced. Absolutely. Very, you know, lightweight for how much blade you're getting. Uh, I mean, you're, you're seriously, you're getting three and a half inches of cutting edge, not just blade, but cutting edge. The ratios are excellent. Um, so there you go. Let's go ahead and do a hardware check. I'm going to get out my tools. As per usual, my tools are very recommendable uh, and very inexpensive. You can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools I use on this channel. I'm going to guess that pivot is a T8. That's what it looks like. Yep. And what do we got back here? These are T6 screws. Bummer. But that's okay, right? Construction is itself is not that big of a deal. If you've ever taken apart an automatic knife, it is not fun to put back together. And I know that people always take that as a challenge. Uh, and you know, there's always gonna be people who go, oh, it's not that hard, I don't want, whatever, fine. Um, my experience having disassembled a ridiculous number of knives, and I mean a ridiculous number of knives, is that this compared to uh, many other common setups like liner locks and frame locks, right? This is on the harder side and the more frustrating side. And the more, you know, you're, you're kind of, you're, you're definitely more likely to cut yourself even if you have practiced hands, right? Uh, let's remember that uh, those people who disassemble knives all the time, while you may be getting better and better and better and better at disassembling various types of knives, you are also exposing yourself more often to the disassembly process. So anybody who wants to say, well, if you know what you're doing, you won't cut yourself, you're full of crap. The more you expose yourself to the disassembly process, the more likely you are to cut yourself versus someone who does not disassemble knives. So save that. This is going to be a little bit more complicated and a little bit more dangerous, a little bit less safe to take apart. I would recommend that you don't do it. If you have something wrong with the knife, obviously contact Kershaw first. Don't take apart your knife and then get mad because their warranty doesn't cover it. I have no idea. Contact them first. Anyways, um, let's go ahead and uh, we already waited. We already did the hardware check, the blade, the blah, blah, blah. Okay, you know what? Let's talk about the uh, meat and potatoes here. I'm a huge fan of this aesthetic. I like, even if it's not like a separate piece, um, I, I'm a huge fan of the old school, not the swivel guard stilettos, which is what the Model 8 or the Launch 8 and the Launch 12 remind me of, but the swing guard stilettos because they look like tiny swords. 
Uh, if you don't know what a swing guard, a lot of people do, but if you don't know what a swing guard is, the guard is a separate piece that as you fold the knife, uh, uh, or as you put the blade into the folded position, the cross guard actually comes over and comes down here. And these swing guards are responsible for, um, you know, the in insanely over-the-top mechanical sound effects that we hear when switchblades are presented in movies. <laughs> the freaking, the weasels in uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit? I'm pretty sure it's the green, the, the weasel who wears the green zoot suit. The very first time I ever saw a switchblade was watching that movie. That weasel pulled that thing out and it's... And it made this crazy, and I was like, holy crap, what kind of knife is that? Um, they are actually very noisy. They make a really satisfying mechanical noise. It's not quite the same as, you know, what the, the movies make it sound like, but they are very noisy. But anyways, the, uh, my joy for the aesthetic of, of um, old school Italian uh, stilettos comes from specifically the swing guard. I like the even um, uh, cross guard, and that's kind of what it makes me... Uh, think of right or your combat daggers right where they just have the the, the cross guard there um, and I like that the swivel guards one hooks up and one hooks down um, which is okay but I, I think this is better I mean the uh, the handle uh, and the position of the button make it truly symmetrical right the pivot is slightly off and I, I can understand why right um, but that's the only thing that's not symmetrical. Even the pocket clip is perfectly centered down the inlay so I really think that's cool on top of that it's actually pretty nice to hang on to. Um, you are, there's, you get a long ways to go before your finger might accidentally ride up on the blade. You might, some people might dare to choke up right here. I don't know that I would. The downside to this is that because of how low this sort of faux cross guard thing is, um, you're quite a ways from the cutting edge if you want to cut straight down. Obviously, it's not that big of a deal, right? I like that they extended the jimping. I like that there is jimping on here and that it's extended so you can really get out here and put your thumb on it, right? But overall, this feels like a very, very utilitarian. The nice thing about this is that it does take on that cool look, right? And... You know, over the years, I think people saw that the, that that's kind of a look. It doesn't always translate into a perfectly ergonomic design. In fact, a lot of those old school stiletto knives really don't, they don't work super well in like, you know, uh, continuous use settings, right? Um, it's, it's knives that have a profile like this or that have a, a profile like this that tend to work a little bit better. But the nice thing I think about this one is, is that, it actually captures that look and it feels really good in the hand. And the pocket clip, bless you, Kershaw, is short. They didn't put this huge, long, like, I'm trying to think of what it relates to. Like, like a, a it's like a clown shoe. A lot of pocket clips just look insane. They're so long. They don't need to be that long. This starts high, there's a drop, and there's a slight bill, which means it's not going to be a grabby pocket clip, but you can still get it in and out of the pants. So one thing I wish they would have done is recess the screws, but they didn't. That's okay. But more importantly, it's short. It's just not as, it's not super long, so you don't feel it. I mean, the vast majority of what's going into my palm is just this area here, which is plenty comfortable, and this bill is so short that any part of it that is going into my hand is just, I don't even notice it. I love the clip. I think that's great. I love that this is so comfortable. There's not like this hand-melting masterpiece of, you know, it's not like an extension of the hand ergonomic line, like the lines like that aren't, aren't insanely perfect or anything, but it's comfortable. There's nothing keeping you perfectly locked in or dedicating you to one specific position. You can move around and you can move around comfortably. Moving on here, let's talk about the blade because I think the blade is cool. There are a lot of things that they could have done here to make this kind of a bummer. Um, as a Hinderer fan, I'm a big fan, of course, of the aesthetic of the Maximus, but there were a few things that made the Maximus not work. Uh, first of all, the scales were symmetrical, but they were kind of ugly. And um, the blade, while it did capture both the bayonet and the dagger version, did capture that classic look. They were just, the blade shape didn't allow for the edge to get, you know, thin enough to be like, to feel like, ah, yeah, you know, like I, it's, it's nice to have this look, but I don't feel like it's worth it to carry it around because it just doesn't work super well. And then Kershaw did the Decimus, which a lot of people, it's so funny. So many people are like, they copied Hinderer. <laughs> They don't look. It says right on the blade, hinder design. The decimus, he copied. They copied the hinder. It, yeah, it's an authorized collaboration. 
Hinderer has worked extensively with Kai in the past, right? The 0562, there's a reason it looks like the XM18, right? Uh, if you want to talk about the, there's, I don't know, there's like 10 other collab knives, but even the Decimus, it didn't work super well. This knife, even though they have a pretty heavy swedge and this line, which carries a lot of thickness out here, the flat, which is the thickest part of the blade, is limited to right here. And there's plenty of room to drop down to the edge. Now, this edge is not an open L edge, right? You're not going to be shaving any grapes or, you know, making wax paper decorations uh, with this knife. But the edge is plenty thin and plenty slicey. Do I have a little piece of paper here? This paper cut test doesn't prove anything other than the knife's ability to slice right out of the box. And slice it does. It does not have a problem with this. It will do this very efficiently, very easily, which is cool. Because it's, yeah, it's, you know, it's one thing to have, like, ah, it's a cool look, right? But does it work? Yeah. They've made this wide enough, and they've made the starting thickness thin enough that it works. But they've still maintained enough thickness out to the tip, which just captures that. You can see here, imagine that these lines are not here. The profile of this blade is essentially symmetrical, right? Now, if they had put the line down the middle and done the classic, you know, grind, then you would have had, you know, the, a bigger switch up here and you would have had, it would have been thicker behind the edge. So I think that this is smart. You still get a nice tip, a nice thin tip. It really does taper pretty well. And it just looks good. You get that nice, cool, symmetrical look. Not the biggest fan of the black wash. Uh, you know, I'll tell you the colors here, are not my favorite colors, but you know, if you look in the past, the past of the launch series, they've definitely done variations uh, with some of the models. They've done different colors and things. So I would imagine if this one's popular, they would explore that. The tan micarta and the black wash blade is not my favorite thing, but Kershaw does a great tumbled blade. They also do great satin finishes. They do amazing satin finishes. So maybe we'll see that in the future. Um, but as, as this one goes, uh, it's the black wash and then it says auto Kershaw. On the other side, we have the in-house design logo. Uh, we have Kai USA and then it says Magna Cut and that's it. This edge is wonderful. And, you know, me and many people in the past have said, you know, Kershaw, their factory edges are, some of them are sharp, some of them aren't, they're goofy, they got wider in some areas, they get thinner in some areas, it looks just, some of them in the past have looked bad. This is great. Everything looks continuous and perfect to me, and I think that's awesome. No nicks or rolls, very bitey right out of the box, and uh, that's fantastic. That's what we want to see, right? Um, let's see here. Oh no, no lanyard thing. Uh, like I said, you can move the pocket clip over to the other side. For Did I say that? You can move it over to the other side so that lefties can enjoy this knife. You'll be firing it with your index finger. But if you're a lefty and you like automatic knives, you're probably no stranger to that. It works just fine. Uh, the stop pin is located in here. And by the way, there's a little teeny tiny micarta backspacer, which it's kind of, I kind of, that's kind of cool. Normally what we see with these is a seam construction. So there's no backspacer. It's just the aluminum just comes together and they kind of, mill little holes to make it decorative or whatever, but that's kind of neat, right? I, I'm hoping that they match the color with whatever they do um, in the future if they do different variations. Lockout, is it solid? Yes, it is. It's completely solid, right? Any more than that, and I don't know that it's really proving anything, but yeah, the lock is completely and totally solid. No blade play up, down, left, to right. There's no button stick, no pivot lash, right? Plenty of plenty of force there, and it clicks into the closed position with just a little bit of, you know, with a lot of automatic knives, you can kind of push down and feel it kind of da -da -da -da, like that. It's very minimal, right? It's about what I see from ProTech knives, etc. How's the centering? Boy, when you do a teeny tiny little backspacer like that, you really have to get the centering perfect because if it's off, it's going to highlight it, but it's not off. It's perfect, right? I would like to see, obviously, uh, satin or tumbled finish and carbon fiber for the inlay. And, you know, carbon fiber, just uh, something black back here, black aluminum or something, whatever, for the backspacer. I would also just, you know, for color on these things, I think they should leave the black and do the inlays with various colors of aluminum and then match the backspacer, right? Imagine this with... um like red aluminum and a red black sp backspacer or blue, right? Um, I'd like to see those in a tumbled finish and the black. I think this is a, a really cool design. I think people are going to like this more than a lot of the other launch series. Some of the launch series knives are really great and some of them are complete misses, right? They're all great for value and construction. Uh, they're all dependable cutting tools, but they're more or less 
good looking, right? I think this is one of the best ones that they have done. And I'll tell you, I was so impressed with the price tag. I legit, as soon as I saw Magna Cut, I was like, cool, but what is this going to be? $175, $180 knife? No, it's $150. <laughs> Round of applause for Kershaw. That is great. I think that is a wonderful price tag. That is a crazy competitive price tag, considering this is a USA made knife utilizing Magna Cut with premium fit and finish. The fit and finish on this is fantastic. It's not lazy. It doesn't look like what I expected from Cor uh, Kershaw a few years ago. It's been getting gradually better, but it's just, it's very, very good. I love this. I think this is cool. I really hope they do different colors. But hey, at 150 bucks, are you kidding me? This is awesome. Yeah, definitely. If you like this look, right, go for it. I mean, there's very few downsides to this. They really thought this one through and I think it looks good. They didn't go wild and crazy with stuff. I will point out there's a couple areas in the inlay where it's not perfect, but man, I'm real nitpicky here. These gaps at the top are a little bit wider. Right, but I'll let you guys look. You can tell a metal complex, you're being a little bit judgy. I don't know if you really need to be that picky. You know what I mean? There's just a couple little areas here, but God dang, I mean, do I even want to complain about it? I don't think so. I, I don't think I want to. I this is a recommendable knife. If you like automatic knives, and more importantly, if automatic knives are legal to own and carry in your local area, that is your responsibility. You look that up. If it's legal. And you can carry or own automatic knives of this size because this is just no matter how whatever you want to define it as. Well, actually, the definition of an automatic like you say whatever you want. This is a switchblade, factually, right? legally. This is a switchblade, and it will be judged as so by your local right? wherever you live. That that's how they're gonna judge it, right? So just know that right before you go out and buy these things. But if you're into that stuff and you can legally own and carry these knives. I recommend this one. I think this is great. I think it's fantastic. Nice work, Kershaw. That's going to be pretty much it for me today. Thanks again to Kershaw for sending this in for review. Like I said, it'll be linked right down below so you guys can check it out along with the other launch series knives. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do of course have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that metal complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.